The next type of diagnostic test is a cerebral spinal fluid test or a CSF test, sometimes known as spinal tap. Um, they extract the fluid, the cerebral spinal fluid, which is found in the ventricles of the brain in the central canal of the spinal cord. The, the cerebral spinal fluid will act as a shock absorber. It helps regulate intracranial pressure. That can also affect transportation of nutrients and wastes in the brain area. It influences brain function. High glucose levels can lead to hunger sensations and affect your eating behavior. So to do cerebral spinal fluid testing or a spinal tap, they do collection uh, for testing through the lumbar puncture or the spinal tap. It's tested for different types of amounts of cells, pathogens, substances such as protein, sugar, and chloride ions, along with the concentration, general appearance, and consistency of the fluid itself. So similar to urine, looking at it and seeing is it turbid, is it clear, what color is it, that can help with the determination if something is abnormal. The normal values for a lumbar puncture, uh, the normal daily production is usually about a half a liter or 500 milliliters a day. The normal circulation around the brain and spinal cord is about one, 150 to 200, 200 milliliters. Its color is generally clear and colorless. And then um, the cell count is usually zero to five microliters, um, cells per microliter. Now, abnormalities in the cerebral spinal fluid could be due to, and the color could be due to a hemorrhage or inflammation um, that can occur like during meningitis or even an injury, trauma, uh, microorganisms, um, and tumors. Also, an increase in white blood cells in the cerebral spinal fluid could be due to an inflammatory disease, a hemorrhage, cancer, or neoplasma, tumor, or trauma. If the white blood cells are less than 500 and mostly made of neutrophils, then there is generally purulent infection. High number of neutrophils in the cerebral spinal fluid could be due to cerebral abscess and embolism. Um, such as bacterial endocarditis, meningitis, bacterial meningitis, early viral meningitis, aseptic or mycotic meningitis, syphilis, or early stages of tuberculosis. If there's a high number of the mononuclear cells in the cerebral spinal fluid, it may be indicative of Guillain-Barre syndrome, multiple sclerosis, syphilis of the CNS, tuberculosis meningitis, tumor or abscess, or a viral infection such as polio. All right, so the next thing that um, is discussed is culture and sensitivity testing, or CNS testing. So this is done when we're trying to identify the best medications um, to treat an infection. So determine the specific organism. We grow it on a culture. Um, usually an agar plate, then we place the medication next to it, a dot of the medication uh, for specific pathogens, and see how effectively it will kill uh, the pathogens that are around it, and hopefully identifying something that will have as little as possible toxic effect to the patient. So the procedure is to take a sample um, from an infection, and, and have it cultured. So using a swab, we put it on a growth medium like an agar plate or something to that extent, let it grow and form its colonies. Then the colonies will be analyzed to try to identify what the organism is. And we look at the shape, um, how they gather together, how they stain, and we look at it under the microscope. The sensitivity of the organism to different medications is then tested. So we use a small disc of an antibiotic or maybe an antifungal on the culture medium. The weakest drug identified by observing how close the organism will continue to grow next to it. A powerful drug disc um, in the medium doesn't allow any colonization. 
near it. So it will destroy the bacteria. It won't let it come near it. So we use this to help determine what is the best medication to treat an infection. We do need to have some things in consideration. So normal flora may grow in colonies. So it may not be a bad bacteria. It may be something that your body grows. Some uh, specimens are comprised of normal flora. Know where it came from, know what the organism is. Verify whether the patient is on some type of antibiotic treatment before doing a um, culture and sensitivity test. I, I'm saying before we do it, we're not going to do this. This would be in a lab, but it does help us identify how to determine the best medications to treat an infection. So the next slide is a picture of slides. So what we note here is, okay, we have a growth medium. So we see they took a swab and they swiped it all over the agar plate and then this grew and we can see when they put the dots down. So this one, we have growth relatively close to the dot. So this may not be an effective, this yellow one may not be an effective um, antibiotic, whatever CL is. So K over here, look at all that, that cleared space around that dot. That, that doesn't, that bacteria doesn't, it's killing it off. So this is pretty effective. That's relatively effective. So you see the size of the, the open clean space around the dots say how effective that bacteria, that antibiotic can be against that bacteria.